Hello and welcome back to the Global Power Core Cup in 1v1 of Dawn of War 3. It's been a long road following each battle starting from the quarterfinals to the finals. We have seen some great plays, some great fails, and nothing but bloodshed in each fight. But the time has come to see who is best of them all. Vindicare was able to launch himself into the finals by crushing Simon in a 2-0 matchup, while Burek was a bit shaky in the beginning versus RTS Colt. However, he did manage to pull away with a 2-1 lead. These two are the best of the best, and without further ado, let's get on with game number one. Too sketchy? Hello, and yes, thank you Too Sketchy and Too Sketchy here, and thank you for showing up. I hope you are as excited as I am because this is game number one of the Global Power Core Cup Finals. Vindicare X as the Space Marines versus Bjork as the Orcs. And before we get this battle started, a big shout out to Sinistro who was able to pull this tournament together. And hopefully we'll have another tournament coming up next weekend, which is open to the public and you yourself are able to sign up. With that out of the way, let's see what elites and doctrines we have in store for us today. Looking on the bottom half side of the map, we do have Vindicare and I really do enjoy his uh, paint scheme here. Sitting on Assault Terminators, which do have the Frag Grenade Doctrine for the uh, Tactical Marines, Imperial Knight Paladin for the late game, and Kill Team Iron Maw for the early game. I'm very happy and excited that we do see the drop pods. Um, we do have Scout Strike, the RTS Colt main Doctrine, I guess you can say, and Overwatch. Very curious how this is going to be utilized in a competitive game and improved listening post looking on the other side of the map we do have Bjork as the orgs as mentioned storm boys weird boy zap noggin beauty to morgan up for the late game tons of bombs healing scrap and the mvp killer cons from the semi-finals utilizing this really well last game to bring him to the finals speaking about finals let's get them going shall we hit and resume undoing the fog of war and checking out what build order these two guys are going to be utilizing it seems like very standard out of Burek, a Gretchen and two boys and looking on the other side of the map however we do have a bunch of servitors coming out of the stronghold <laughs> bunch of half man robots not really robots because I know the lore does not allow robots into the Imperium however they're they're robots to me <laughs> we do have this servitor the first one coming out is in very inclined on in getting these this uh, elite point generator. I wonder if Vindicare's wanting to go late game and call in Imperial Knight Paladin in order Assault Terminator extremely early. I don't know, but looking at the map, we do have a voice hunt coming out from Burek near the point, as well as a barracks down here on the southern part of the map out of Vindicare. So they're both building their first production buildings. And here we have what RTS Colt is known to do, to send a Servitor behind enemy lines and capture this point, which will give vision. Oh, he does pro it looks like Skull Observer, I think the name of that ability is. The Servo Skull. The what? Alright, Servo Skull. Something like that. I knew I had it right. One of those words were right. And he is being Rambo with him right now. <laughs> Sending him into the back line. Wanting to decap this elite point. Yes, it does seem like Vindicare cares about the elite points. Wanting to either deny his and or gain more than his opponent. It looks like he did build one and improved listing post. Engagement on weak enemy force because it is a servitor being found out by the shooter boy squad. That Burek was able to build out of the boys hut early on. <laughs> Good job. Sending in servitors, <laughs> trying to get as much information as he can. We do have a power gen being built here. And a bunch of boys finding a scout unit. I don't know if they're going to be able to make it out. However, the stun grenade does come down, stunning up both units. And able to make it out, what seems like, unless these Gretchens tie them up in melee combat. No, he utilizes the tech to area instead and are not able to stealth as you saw right there. However, they do make it out perfectly fine. These shooter boys were going to come in and help. However, looking at the map here, we do have Vindicare harassing points with another squad. 
of scout marines. He is very, very inclined of harassing Burek and taking what is all his economy right now. Is he going to be able to stop it? It doesn't look like it. He does bring down a drop pod, which fills, seems to be filled with ASMs, keeping the scout marines up here to be able to harass that point indefinitely. These shooter boys do not want to deal with this melee combat. And now the squad is approaching. They do have the shield. Proc from when coming out of the drop pods, they do gain whatever unit is in there, does gain a shield. Able to make it out with no health lost at all. And the scout marines were able to buy enough time. The ASMs were able to buy enough time for the scout marines to harass this point completely. Yurik, I'm sure, is not too happy about that. Needing to use his power to be able to build that requisition generator. It's going to hurt him just slightly. Again, these scout marines are revealed, though, by the Gretchens, hoping to harass another point. This time, Burek is totally prepared for this, surrounding him with every unit that he has. <laughs> Good job, Avindica, trying, but this time, he loses another squad behind enemy lines. First, it was the Servitor, now a scout marine, and <laughs> he's not done. He's going to send another unit. However, looking at the mid-section of the map, we do have an assault marine and a scout marine here harassing another point forcing Burek to call in what seems to be storm boys and countering that we do have kill team iron mall here stunning up s several units from the storm boys tying kill team iron mall in some melee looks like tons of bombs was proc but did not land stun grenades did stun up the storm boys to keep them away however suicide bomber did come out stunning up kill team iron mall I don't know how he's going to be able to follow up on us. It looks like Vindicare is on the run. Dropping down the standard to push whatever orcs are close by. And we do have Overwatch being utilized here by the snipers. Baiting them to come towards them. He didn't have a lot of charge in there. When Overwatch is procced, over time, the snipers do build a certain amount of shots. 10 to the max. 10 to the max. 10 is their maximum. Vortex Grenade does tie up some shooter boys. But we do have an open shield generator right here. And Vindicare has to back off. And I don't know why Burek is actually chasing the sniper squad. He is very known to harassing points and getting objectives and finishing the game because that's what matters. However, he's more about chasing the sniper squad. Vindicare very well micro to the side. Putting him in stealth cover. However, stick bomb. Following up, Storm Boys beating them with their axes. And the boys, shooter boys, are taking up this improved listen points. These shooters turned up real quick. We do have Vindicare X utilizing Overwatch right here in this vicinity. But you need to be able to sit on this for a little bit to be able to utilize it to its maximum ability. We do have Kill Team Armor stepping up, hoping to kill to kill off, not kill off, but clean up whatever was left over from this assault out of Bjork. They are stepping up, hoping to catch anyone out of position. I think he does get some information that Shooter Boys, oh here it is, he, do, he does see some, and Vortex Grenades, the majority of them stun grenade very well utilized, however, Storm Boys following up, jumping in here to keep the Flamers from stopping that flame ability, however, they do get knocked off. Flames still being utilized to burn up some shooter boys and boys. I was going to say the scout marines were trying to buy time for Vindicare to burn as many units as he can. However, Stick Bombs comes out and wipes that unit completely. He was trying to utilize the snipers, but it takes time for them to set up. Just a few seconds, if not, just one second. But I think Vindicare did a really well, did a really good job by cutting off what seems to be a retreat point. He is utilizing another scout to find out more information to where Burek is going to send this wad boy squad at. Vindicare is sitting on some Overwatch and he is charging up what seems to be three, four, four stacks of these Overwatch. DPS damage is coming out. Kill Team Armo seems a little bit out of position. I don't know if Stick Bombs is going to be utilized. It doesn't need to be, actually. It's just a straight DPS out of them. 
He does lose kill team Iron Maul and a sniper unit. One is able to make it out because they were in the back, in the rear. One scout unit again behind enemy lines. Being very aggressive with these, and I like seeing that. However, you just got to be careful because he is losing units consistently. Looking at the map, we do have improved listening posts on every resource node that belongs to Vindicare. And as well as Bjork is building listening posts on all his nodes because of the harass that is being utilized from the scout marines. A Wa tower is going off. We do have a bit of an engagement here between some Gretchens and a uh, scout marine squad. Overwatch is being utilized. The best way I think Overwatch is utilized is if you were put the sni your snipers in the rear back here and then put the overwatch in this circle because you are guaranteed that the enemy is going to come through here and as you can see this overwatch is going to go to waste because Bjerg is taking a hard right right here and splitting up his units utilizing tons of bombs I think Vindicarex had to stop whatever he was building here and the remaining army of the orcs is charging to the right side of the map and it's going to harass this listing post and the resource nodes on it. I don't know if Vindicare X is going to be able to follow up on this. However, he is calling down a drop pod filled with ASMs again. Got to be careful because Bjerg is sending in the rest of his army, which is the majority of his shooter boys right here. Utilizing stick bombs. And this is enough to keep Bjerg at bay with just a scout marine and an ASM. Improved listing post. I think the damage Bjerg did not want to be in the middle of that at all. I think Bjerg being scared that more units were going to follow up on that. He summons in Storm Boys just to be careful. He did have enough, so why not? Zap Noggin is here. Scrapping together whatever scrap he can get. The more scrap he does have, this ability, Scrap, that, scla that, scrap Blast, does get a wider AoE. We do have this upgradable to Tier 2. We are in escalation phase number two. Overwatch being utilized. He's trying to bait out. I don't think anyone's going to come in here just yet. He's doing a hell of a job utilizing Overwatch to the best of his ability though. Zap Noggin is going to take a walk down here towards the shield generator. Death Watch kill team is available. We are in tier tech two for the Space Marines. Waz being proc. It looks like Storm Boys scrapped ability completely wipes the arsenal. Oh my god, I didn't know it did that much damage. An enemy force is on the move. And I don't know if Bjerg was trying. Oh, we did have the Overwatch being proc, but there's so many units in here. Snipers cannot focus them all at once. It is not an AoE, it is a single target damage. And they are going to take a dive. Not only them, but the Servitor here as well. ASMs. And upgrade it. Seems like it is the Flamer upgrade on Kill Team Iron Maul. Vindicarex does engage on this with ASMs. I wonder where Zap Noggin is right now. It would have been a perfect time. However, stun grenades. There he is actually teleporting in. Vortex grenades. Another stun grenade going off. The Scrap Blast does come out. Kind of. There it is. Almost burst them down completely. They trade it. An ASM for Shooter Boy. Fist of Gork comes out and shoots the improved listening poison as all this was happening guess what Bjerg has been doing he's been very busy with the storm boys harassing points again as we saw versus RTS Colt they have enough health to the point where they can take down improved listening posts and for the remaining health they can harass whatever resources are on this however it doesn't seem like okay he did he catches them with just a minimal amount of health and is able to micro them out we do have another wall going off. Zap Noggin over here. DPS in his improved listen post will eventually get it. If Vindicare doesn't take care of this. Another wall going off. And Vindicare is being puppeteered right here. Has to respond to everything Bjerg is sending. He does throw down a stun grenade at Zap Noggin. He can teleport out if he feels in danger. Steps up though like a man. And completely bursts. I don't think Vindicare <laughs> knew that. He was paying attention to that unit. I think he was trying to engage on this thinking that Zap Noggin was AFK and he was paying attention to somebody else. Catching some scouts out of position. Utilizing tons of bombs and stick bombs. 
These scouts are being microed by Vindicare. However, they do get ca caught up trying to bring in Kill Team Armor to support this. And this is a dead resource node of power requisition and most likely another point of requisition. However, we do have Death Storm coming down from Vindicare doing an AoE amount of damage right here. And Vindicare flaming the shooter. However, Zap Noggin is trying to teleport all his units out of here. Vindicare does utilize whirlwinds. We do have some whirlwinds and artillery on the battlefield here. And trying to predict where he was going to be teleporting to. He did a hell of a job doing that. It wasn't just enough damage, however. Man, the harass out of Burek on this point over and over and over is definitely wearing out Vindicare. Vindicare teleporting Kill Team Iron Maw to be able to utilize them as fast as possible again out of the drop pod with full health. Looks like we do have shooters. I didn't think they can get this vision. However, they do have enough vision to poke at this. And again, we do have Kill Team Iron Maw who just teleported in here with full shield. However, they are getting shredded down. Looks like another drop pod is being utilized and the Terminator squad does come in. This shooters, this looter squad actually is going to take a dive here. We do have Storm Boys on his side again harassing at this point. The Wad did get procced but only two units got affected this time. Zap Naga still scrapping together whatever he can to be able to have a more powerful Q ability. Looks like Burek is waiting for what was Death Storm over here to go away. I'm curious if Vindicare saw that. Looks like he is sending his Terminator squad over here. And as that's happening, we do see Zap Noggin and a squad of Shooter Boys going towards what seems to be the shield generator down there. World 1's coming out. Too many units are moving at once. I don't know which one to look at. The World 1's tried to proc the Shooter Boys. Shooter Boys can't get that though. We do have... Terminator's doing a burst damage, teleporting in to defend. Oh no. Unfortunately, Storm Boys were able to jump out earlier in the match. We did see Whirlwind trying to defend this, and there was no danger because we did have units in here procking the shield of the shield generator and keeping them at bay with Whirlwinds consistently. We do have Big Track with Super Cannons out. On the battlefield now, this squad is going to take a dive here, but it is giving information to Vindicare that there are units there. However, he does miss a volley of whirlwinds. And here comes Big Track and Fist of Gork. There aren't any units in here. Just utilizes it to hurt the improved listing post. ASM's in here, completely surrounded by some boys and Zap Noggin. Utilizing the Q ability, trying to do as much splash damage as possible. However, I don't think that's what is causing the damage. It's the big tracks in the back that are able to haul in their artillery. Terminators needing to step aside. And this is the focus point for Burek. Looks like the Terminators are going to be able to teleport in and utilize their sa Hammer Slam, I think it's called. It is called Hammer Slam. But not enough. Just slightly. Being able to manage these boys out of there. I do hear Wolven going off, hoping to catch them. Just out of the AOE, these boys do make it out with minimal amount of health. However, the big tracks are continuously harassing this over and over. These servitors are very persistent trying to heal up this improved listening post. However, the vision that Bjork is getting is from these Gretchens right here. And that's why the big tracks are attacking. Even the mines are being casted. One servitor is already gone. I do hear a listening post going off and again. Wouldn't you know it, Storm Boys consistently harassing this point, playing the game of attrition against Vindicare X, taking whatever resources he can. He's got to be careful. These Gretchens are revealing all of his units. Scouts, Devastators with Lance Cannons, and Big Track does focus this. I don't think Vindicare X realizes what's happening. I do hear Fist of Gore coming out towards this Lance Cannon squad. Does not wipe them, but does do a significant amount of damage. We do have whirlwinds being used. And it's not for the Storm Boys. Storm Boys is being occupied by Kill Team Iron Maw. Whirlwinds actually utilized for this right here. This barrage is chunking down health of the Orc player, Burek. And still, Big Trek 
able to utilize the artillery fire over and over. Just because of the sheer vision, this Gretchen was able to give off. The Luda squad. Death Gun Luda is sort of out of position here. And looks like they... Wait, what? They teleported. Oh, okay. Just to let you know, Zap Noggin does have a elite doctrine which allows Death Gun Ludus to teleport to the nearest Watt Tower, which there they are right here. For a second, I thought he did mass recall, but that was way too fast, and being in combat actually cancels that out. Very good micro by Burek here. I hear the whirlwind going off, most likely, in this vicinity right here. Yep. Vista Gore comes in. Teleporters do teleporters. Terminators do teleport in and utilize what was Hammer Slam. However, Killicon's in the back. He's got to be careful. Vortex Grenade trying to buy as much time as possible for these Terminators to make it out. Where are. Okay, here they are. They threw in a Vortex Grenade and immediately bounced. They didn't want any of this. ASM seem to be surrounded by the green skins here. And is able to jump out of this shenanigans. Standard did come down just to buy enough time to push the orcs away. However, he does not have the standard right now. And engaging on this for Bureau might be a good idea. We do hear a lance cannon being built. He does have one lance cannon right here, but it's not getting reinforced. He needs to hit R on that to be able to reinforce that because we do have a lot of heavy armor here on the field right now. Whirlwind being utilized. Again, missing with the whirlwinds. He did have one good volley earlier. Kill Team Ironmall getting focused down by boys and shooter boys. Needing to retreat here. The shield is gone. Most likely by the big track damage. We do have Vista Gork again. Focusing this building. Chucking down half of its health and then the big track follow up on that. Heavy bolters utilizing their machine guns to keep whatever boys were harassing this point. However, it looks like so much is happening on this field battlefield right now. I don't know what to keep my focus on, but it looks like Zap Noggin stepped up and is putting these devastators in the rear march formation, pushing them away. We did have for some reason. All right, so the shield generator did get did get gotten, I guess you could say, by the big tracks. But I was more curious about why Kill Team Iron Maul is all the way up here. Did okay, he did. That's what that's what finally happened. He utilized Kill Team Iron Maul, and I think Burek was more focused on getting the shield generator, which Vindicare X found the time to send Kill Team Iron Maul over there and finally get the Storm Boys. However. He did have to pay the price and losing the shield generator down here. Terminators are so tanky. They were barely getting away. It's like Kill Team Iron Maul did take a loss here. I don't know where they died. It's so hard to keep up with these two players. They are battling what seems to be five battles at once. Whirlwind, and there she is. Beauty the Morkinon. The late game hero elite. Got to be careful here. I don't think Vindicare X is prepared for any of this because getting the shield generator allowed him to cast and or spawn this hero. He's just following up what is a massive army of Killicons, a tank and tank busters harassing whatever devastators he does have. And no devastators now. If you have a problem, son, drop some dreadnoughts on it, Vindicare says, because dreadnoughts are hella destructive and is able to tie up this tank and as that's happening though beauty and knobs also a truck which seems to be a bit out of position here gets one round into the turret Bjerg is going to utilize this time to harass that point down there to the south while the dreadnought of vindicare x chases down these killicons i think vindicare x is very familiar with how much damage these killicons do and wiping them off the map is a good idea we do have tank buses finding out an arsenal. Dreadnought is punching them in the butt, but it doesn't matter because majority of Burek's army right here is down south near the turret. 
And I don't know if Vindicare is able to defend himself properly. Jeez. Some of the big track RNG damage coming here. Even utilized towards the heavy bolters that for some reason is stepping up to shoot Beauty the Morkana in the back. I don't know if this is a good idea. He did utilize the Gretchen ability here. The Gretchen repair squad. Terminators do come in and teleport. And trying to utilize the hammer down ability. However, they do get stunned by the boys' melee engagement. Beauty the Morkanite utilizing what seems to be custom force field. Um, Zap Naga stepping up. I don't know. He seems to be a bit out of position here. Orbital beam. Is that what it's called? I forget the name of it. It doesn't really matter because Vindicare threw in the white towel. Ladies and gentlemen, game number one going to Burek. So much action towards the end. I wasn't able to keep up with the majority of it. There was just so many fights. And I think the reason Vindicare lost here is one, the co consistent harassment that Burek was, was able to send the Storm Boys on resource points. And two, I don't think Vindicare was able was ever able to switch over to the late game build. No predators, no anti armor except those two lands cannon, but they kept getting harassed. However, Bjerg answered really strongly and I think the harass out of him mid game to late game was a lot better. So hoping in game two Vindicare was able to learn what he did wrong here and utilize that to hopefully take game two? I don't know. Send it back to you to the studio. Too sketchy out. Once again, the late game orcs able to put a mark into the books by putting Burek ahead of Vindicare X in game number one. Vindicare seemed to never have been able to properly transition over to the late game. The lack of anything anti-heavy armor I think cost him the game here and the constant harass which the storm boys out of Burek are known to make it hard for the space marines to advance. Well, with game one in the bag, can Vindicare X redeem himself in game two? Or will Burek pull away and crown himself the champion of the first global core cup of Dawn of War 3? Stick around and we'll see you then.